Lord, we love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, and with everything that God you have given us. You are the only one that we worship. You are the only one that deserves our praises and our worship. For there is none like you. You have been a faithful God. You are a faithful God. And forever you shall be faithful. You never change this, Lord. Nothing can change who you are. Lord, you are faithful. And this morning we are grateful to you for according us this opportunity to approach your throne of grace and your throne of mercy this morning with expectations that, Lord, you are going to find grace as we walk in this journey of salvation in our lives and in our families. Heavenly Father, we declare your majesty this morning. We declare your greatness this morning. We declare that you are an awesome God and above you there is none like you. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you today being the last Saturday of the month of June. Lord, you have been faithful. Lord, you have walked with us. Lord, we have seen you. We have seen you doing wonders in our nation, in our lives, in our families. And Lord, as we come before you, we are coming with a grateful heart expressing our gratitude to you for what you have done, for what you are doing, and for what you are about to do. We want to confess our sins to you. Forgive us, Lord. Lighten our hearts with your glory. And help us, our Father, as we lift our hands in worship, as we lift our voices in worship, how we pray that the sacrifice that we shall offer to you this morning will be worthy and acceptable before you. Heavenly Father, what can separate us from you is sin. But thank you, Jehovah Lord, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. That through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Forgive us, O oh God. And help us by your mercies and grace to walk and follow the paths of righteousness. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we cannot make it. Without you, Jehovah God, even our tomorrow and our future cannot be the way the Lord wanted to be in accordance to your will. That's why we are calling upon you, for we know that when you walk with us, our tomorrow will be better. Our future will be brighter because you are faithful. As we continue to worship you, manifest in our praises and in our worship. And as our praises and worship goes high, let your blessings come down. As we lift up our voices to you, Heavenly Father, let your blessings come down. We thank you, we honor you, and we acknowledge your presence in our midst, and we pray that, Lord, you may walk with us and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for the opportunity to worship and to praise his name. Today being the last Saturday 
of the month of June. And the Lord has been faithful to us. And today in this session of worship, I want us we take some time and give thanks to the Lord. One thing I know about thanksgiving, you do not give thanks for what has been done to you, but you also give thanks for what God has not done, but we have hope and faith that he will do it. Because about the promises of God are yes and amen. And as we dedicate our time in worship, as we give thanks to the Lord for what he has done, I was counting the blessings of God that the Lord has preserved us as the nation. The Lord has preserved us as the church that from January and now the sixth month is coming to an end, we can attest of the faithfulness of God. The Lord has been faithful. God has worked with us and we have all the reason to give thanks and to praise his name. And as the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, 6 to 7, that do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your petitions or your request to God. And what will be done to you is that the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I want us, as we worship the Lord this morning, even as you are following us, you have a reason to give thanks to the Lord. You have a reason to express your gratitude to our Lord Almighty because God has walked with us, because God has seen us through. So do not be anxious about anything as we pray and raise our petitions to the Lord. Let's have a heart of thanksgiving. And the praise team will lead us in songs of thanksgiving as we give thanks to the Lord, as we worship the Lord, and as we present our petitions to the Lord. And what will happen is that the peace of God that surpasses our human understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Welcome the praise team as we continue to give thanks and to worship the Lord. Asante Yesu, 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 Yeah. 
Ya ku fahamu Wewe Kulie mungu wakali Na ulie mungu waleo Kazi za kuza onyesha Uku wako wewe Umetukuka umeinuliwa Ewe buwana Sema kweli kweli wewe 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 ni mungu Sema kweli your disciples in prayer let your kingdom come oh God let your will be done in our lives everlasting father even as we draw near and we are in your presence this wonderful morning our hearts are filled with gratitude and gratefulness because of all that you've done for us knowing that it's not by our power nor by our might but it's by your spirit oh God it is because you're faithful king of all glory and you have brought us this far you have sustained us. We marvel in your presence, O oh God. Thank you because of the gift of life. Thank you, King of all glory, because of a new day. Thank you, everlasting Father, for seeing us through the first half of this year, everlasting God. Thank you because of your grace that has been so sufficient in our lives. Knowing, O oh God, it is not because we wake up so early or we sleep so late that we have bread on our table, clothes on our back. Oh God, we are thankful and we are grateful. If we were to be charged for the air that we breathe, oh God, who could afford it everlasting God? But yet you've given us these gifts free of charge, everlasting God. We thank you because since COVID came in our nation and in the world, you have protected us. Some of us have not been affected by this disease, oh God, in our health. And we want to thank you, O oh God. Some of us, my God, have been affected and infected by COVID, O oh God, but yet you still healed us. And we know it is all about you because some others succumbed. But O oh God, we are alive today because of your grace. We thank you that even though times have been hard in our nation and even in the world, you have been together with us. You say in your word that you are Emmanuel, God together with us and just like Samuel said that you are Ebenezer because this far 
your hand has brought us, O oh God. And everlasting God, you say in your word that nothing can ever separate us from your love. What a blessed assurance we have this morning that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, or not angels nor demons can be able to separate us from your love. And our God, that even though we fall and fail, your love covers a magnitude of sins. And by the blood, oh God, you have cleansed us and you have purified us. We are thankful and we are grateful. And even as we share your word, oh God, speak to us. Use me as a vessel. May I decrease that you may increase. May you speak to us all, for we commit our minds, our hearts, and our souls unto you. For this is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We may have our seats. <laughs> I take this opportunity to greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. Even our viewers online, we trust that you are well. And we are happy that you can join us today in our prayers in the last Saturday of the month of June. And we are thankful and grateful to God for his grace. I want to share the word of God briefly in the book of Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Allow me to read from verse 5. Now, I will tell you what I'm going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain, on it. This is a scripture that we are very much familiar with. And it actually starts with a song. And actually the title, the heading of that scripture says, The Song of My Vineyard. And this is a, a person who was singing about his vineyard. And he was saying that he did everything possible for his vineyard to produce uh, Good, uh, a, a, a good grapes. But after doing all the work that he did on this, on, this, on this land, he still produced sour grapes. And he came up to a, he came to a conclusion and he said that he's going to let that land become a wasteland. He said he's going to let that land become, he's going to take away the hedge and let it be destroyed and be trampled all over. And today I want to talk about cultivating our spiritual life. Just like this man or the person talking about his vineyard, we have our vineyard and that is our spiritual life. In the same case with the land, if you do not plant anything, there will definitely be something that is going to grow. You do not even require a lot of effort to do bad. You do not require so much to bring down something. The construction of this church took a while, but bringing it down can be done in a matter of days. The Bishop Ranji Plaza was brought up or was built up after a while and it costed so much, but bringing down this structure can just take just a matter of days. So it is easy to destroy than it is to build. That is the same case with our lives. That it is easy to destroy ourselves than it is to build ourselves. There's this Swahili saying that says, Asiefunzwa na mamake ufunzwa na dunia. And that is very true. That even though we have been given responsibilities for those who have children, to bring up the children in the ways of God or show them the right way or the right path. If we do not play our role and teach them and show them the right way, somebody else is going to do it. And most likely, 
they are not going to do a very good job. And that is the same case with our lives. We are supposed to be alert in the spirit that we are supposed to feel and know when God is speaking, that God is supposed to give us messages, that God is supposed to be speaking prophetically even today on the church. But because of the state and the, of the state of ourselves or our spirits, we are unable to discern when God is speaking. We just do things because it's just a normal thing and it's a normal life. For a Christian to be fruitful, we must be prayerful. And I thank God because of those that are here in the morning. And I thank God because of those who are watching us from our homes. The more we pray, the more we draw ourselves to the presence of God. And if we are in the presence of God, there is no way we can be in the midst or in the presence of God and actually even leave that place empty-handed or even without getting a message from God. We will be strengthened when we pray. There's a man who says that a prayerless, a prayerless Christian is a weak Christian, and that is true. If we do not pray, if we do not take time to meditate upon the word of God, if we do not take time to cultivate our spiritual life, we will become weak Christians. And if we do not do that, negative things will happen in our lives. We try to point out what is happening around us. We may not come up with a good solution or a good response, but the fact of the matter is, if we do not do something, something is going to happen. Every action has a reaction on the other side, either good or bad. When you decide to, to do a generous act to a person, there is something that you spark in that person and it will cause another action from the action that you have done. That is the same case with our lives and our spiritual lives. That if we cultivate our lives with good things, that if we cultivate our spirits and feed our lives with good things, we are definitely going to yield positive things. It may be hard. It may be difficult. It may take time, like how time to, the time was taken when, we were build, when this church was being built. It may take time. It may take resources. It may take a lot of energy, but it is worth it. God has already paid the price for us when he sent his son to die on the cross because of our sins. We have no excuse today. We have no excuse as Christians for the price has already been paid. If there is something that is fundamental and very crucial in a Christian's life, it is the word of God. In every trial, in every problem that we are going through, there is always a solution in the word of God. Reverend Ann last week was sharing in the, in the, in the lunch hour um, uh, service and she was talking about when we go to, before God to pray. That it is powerful and effective when we pray with the word of God. Praying with the word of God, with revelation and with understanding. But now if we do not know what the word of God is saying, if we do not take time to meditate upon the word of God, if we do not take time to spend time with God in prayer, in reading the word of God, in meditation, in serving men, fasting, and all that, how are we going to be able to exercise the authority that God has given us? In the book of Genesis, in the beginning, it says that God said, let us create man in our own image and in our own likeness. And that image, I believe when you were growing up, we used to think it's the outside, it's, uh, it's the outside appearance. But that's not the case. Because if God was the flesh, then it is to mean that God dies or died. But because God lives and this dies, it is to mean that whatever God put in us as his image is a spiritual part that we cannot see. And that is the most neglected area of a Christian life. We concentrate on pampering ourselves on the outside, but if we really look deeply inside us, 
there is so much stones. The stones that choke up the seed and the word of God that lacks bearing in our lives. Because we have not taken time to really cultivate ourselves. That is why we find the house of God is filled with slander. That is why we find we are filled with anger. We are filled with grudges. We are filled with unforgiveness. We are filled with hatred. We are filled with lust. We are filled with every manner of evil in this world. Remember the man who planted, the master who had planted, and in the night, a thief came in and planted negative seeds, bad seeds. And he said, let them grow together. What if he hadn't planted something? Because he knew that even though the evil one or the, or the devil has come and planted bad seed, he knew even after they grow, we can be able to separate the good and the bad. So, so long as we are alive, the devil is going to plant something negative in our lives. Now the question is this, have we planted something else that is going to overshadow, that is going to outgrow, that is going to stand out between the bad and the good? May God help us today as we, as we continue in this spiritual walk, as we continue to serve God daily, as we continue to grow daily as Christians, that we need to cultivate our spiritual life. We need to cultivate our spiritual life. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Inua, inua, moyo angu, ili mimi nizungumze. Oh, inua, inua, moyo angu, ili mimi nizungumze na we. Amen. We thank God for his word. And we pray that the Lord may help us to meditate upon his word and implement whatever that we have heard this morning. We have come to the end of our morning prayers. And before we end, I request the praise team to lead us in uh, just two choruses, praise choruses, as we pray the final prayer.
want you to just have a minute and whisper something to the Lord. What you desire from the Lord to do in your life. Many other times that we desire things to happen but we don't make them known, be known to the Lord. It's an opportunity. Make it be known to the Lord. Maybe in this month of June, you have encountered a lot of challenges. But make this a prayer that God will walk with you as we come to the end of the month of June as we turn another page in the month of July, that the Lord will be gracious and merciful to you. And where seems to be no way, He will make a way because He is faithful. And as we sing this song, just have it in your heart and believe it in your heart that God will make a way for you. That God will see you through.
Father, you are amazing God. Because what you do in our lives, we cannot make it on our own. You are so great, you are so powerful, and you are very faithful God. We thank you, Jehovah God, because it is going to be well in our lives. We thank you because you are going to answer our prayers in accordance to your will. We thank you because you are going to make a way where seems to be no way. We thank you for everything, Lord. We surrender ourselves to you. And we pray that you may walk and guide us all through the day. And when you shall give us another chance to come and pray, to come and worship you, to come and praise you, we shall remember to give you thanks and to give you praise. And now may the peace of the Lord that surpasses our human understanding may keep your heart and mind in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit may walk with you, remain with you now and forevermore. The Lord be with you. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a mighty hand clap. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for his faithfulness. Thank you, Cathedral Praise Team, for, for such a wonderful moment and your good voices. May the Lord continue blessing you. Thank you, our instrumentalists, the technical team, and all of us on behalf of our provost, thank you for coming this hour of prayer. And we are looking forward that by the grace and the mercy of God, we shall come and give thanks to the Lord in the month of July, the last Saturday of the month. And we know because our God is faithful, he will see us through and he will enable us to see the last Saturday of July. So may the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful day and continue trusting and putting your faith in the Lord. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.